gratitude today for the family, from the family and from myself. I'm Brother Ron's son-in-law, Denise's husband, and uh, been able to walk this road with the family for so many years. But I just want to express my gratitude, the family's gratitude to each one of you for being here today, for coming out on this Saturday. Um, there's one reason we're here and there's one, one reason only, and that's to recognize the life well lived, the race ran by Ron Wilcox. But let's begin today in worship through prayer. Preaching the gospel, reaching the lost, Lord, we come to you today to remember and celebrate the life of Brother Ron Wilcox, a man after God's own heart through his sacrificial service and love to his bride and family, a father who poured out his love to his children, a grandfather modeling Christ to the family and a pastor to an entire community, let alone the churches he faithfully served. Ron is a friend to everyone he encountered, and most importantly, a child of God who is in a wonderful place with no more sickness. We thank you, Lord, today for this race ran well, and thank you, Lord, for giving him strength as he glorified you. I asked for strength for Miss Uri and the family as they mourn, yet we give you praise for the comfort we have because of glory. I give you thanks for the, allowing us to have hope, Lord, and a promise for our future in a place we call heaven, where we as Christians will serve and worship you for eternity. It's in your precious name, Lord, we ask it. Amen. If you would stand, we are going to start by singing hymn number 410, It Is Well With My Soul. Brother Bud Collins, please come and lead us.
seated. Good afternoon. We're here to honor Dr. Ronald Wayne Wilcox. To some of you, he was a husband. To some of you, a daddy. To some of you, he was a granddaddy. A brother, a cousin. May have been or still are fellow clergy or a friend. He was my pastor and my friend. So Nisi uh, said I had about five minutes. And I, I didn't tell her then, well I may have, but it bears repeating. It's known that I'm pretty slow. It takes me an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes. <laughs> and I got to reading and thinking and jotting down notes. And I remembered what John said about Jesus. He said he didn't write down everything Jesus did. If he had, all, the books wouldn't contain it. And I'm well aware that many of you could do a real good job, and could outpace me today, okay? But all I know to do is come here and do what the Lord told me to do. And I talked with my wife coming over here and Brother Van right back a while ago. No one honor the Lord, honor Brother Ron. So that's what I come to do today. Brother Ron come to our church he was in about his mid-30s. Uh, I, I want to think he was maybe 37 years old as a lay speaker. The Lord had been dealing with him. He answered the call to preach. He was ordained Southside Baptist Church in Hazelhurst, and they, they ordained three men that afternoon. He come on back to downtown Scriven, and I'm going to read you a passage of scripture that encompasses everything I know about Brother Ron. Now, now, number one, when I got to know Brother Ron, I was keenly aware there was something different about this man. And he was never Ron Wilcox to me. He was preacher, Brother Ron. I have a high respect for the clergy. And the reason I do, God does. He's anointed those people, okay? So he, he pursued that education, and he went on down to Jacksonville. He went several places, but he obtained a Bachelor of Science, a Master, and a Doctorate degree. I heard a preacher tell me about two weeks ago that he had a doctorate degree, and he said his daddy told him, says, now, son, don't get hung up on this doctorate degree. That thing's like a pig's tail. It's cute and curly, but there ain't much meat there. <laughs> now, I purposely made this statement. Brother Ron got an earned doctorate degree in ministry. He did not just get a sheepskin and file it away. Brother Ron used it every day in every facet of his life. Let me read you one verse of scripture here. Most of you could quote this for you. This is 2 Timothy 2.15. Be, be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed, correctly teaching the word of truth. Now that was a concept that he, he, he went to. He stayed there. Now, Brother Ron took that doctorate degree, and this is what the preachers want you to do every Sunday. When they proclaim the Word of God, it is not just for the 11 o'clock hour on Sunday morning. God intends for us to take the Word and use it in a daily walk of life, every day, every hour, and every minute. And if you back up and take a big look at Brother Ron's life, he incorporated that principle 
in his life. It didn't matter where he was selling rat poison or smoke alarms or Buicks or bulldozers or playing the guitar or the piano. He, he went to the best. He studied. He practiced to get better and better and better. I think that's a good pattern for life. This book is full of little nuggets that'll just help us along the way. I could stand up here all afternoon and tell you about the good things that I shared with Brother Ron. He shared with me our relationship over time. Uh, some of the times we were called on to do some things that uh, were not real pleasant. And I'll just make this statement here. If you're in leadership, anybody can handle the job while it's going good if you're in leadership. But now when it slides in the ditch, you're going to separate the men from the boys. You're going to have to suck it up. Okay? We're getting to that place in this country, and I think it's right on us. If you stay staunch in the church, you're going to have to suck up some things and put your big boy britches on. Brother Ron showed me how to do that. One of the best things that Brother Ron showed me was that uh, there's a difference between witnessing and soul winning. And he demonstrated how to do that. He called it one beggar leading another beggar to where he found bread. So I would just conclude today. Thank you for the time here today. Wilcox family, bless you. I was proud to call Brother Ron my pastor. And over about the last five years, to call him my friend. Our friendship grew closer, closer. It was not unusual to spend an hour on the phone with Brother Ron. Good, godly man. Thank you. God bless you.
My name's Lynn Harris, for those of you that may not know me. <clears throat> and as I tried to think through this, I was trying to think how long have I known Brother Ron, and it's around 44 years that I knew him. And uh, with that much time knowing a person, and uh, Denise telling me I had three to five minutes, I had to go to this. You know, what's one or two of the most important things. Well, let me tell you a couple of things that God's Word says. In Romans 10, 17, it says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And in verse 15 of Romans 10, it says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Now, in 44 years, I may have seen Brother Ron barefoot. I really can't remember if I did or not, but I know this. He had beautiful feet because he preached the gospel of peace. And when I think of Brother Ron, this is typically the first thing that comes to my mind. I always remember about him. He was the pastor that made the Bible come alive for me. And he did it through, as far as I can remember, best I know, he did it through a thing that I'd never heard before. It was something called expository preaching, where he'd just open the Bible, take a text, he'd read it, then go back and just walk through that text and tell us what this says and what this, what this teaches us. Now, while all that was going on in the pulpit, I had Durwood as a Sunday school teacher in the classroom and uh, sitting under Brother Ron's preaching, Durwood's teaching brought a young man that thought he was saved but wasn't brought me to salvation. I got saved under that preaching and that teaching. I, I watched Brother Ron for a number of years and I, I can say this about him. I agree with Derwood. He, he lived a studied life. Uh, it didn't matter what he was doing. He liked to fish. He especially liked to catch white perch. He studied the Audubon River until he learned how to catch white perch in there when nobody's supposed to be able to. You usually don't catch them in the summertime. He'd catch them in the summertime because he studied it. <clears throat> but above and beyond that, he studied the Bible so that he was ready to preach it and to tell those who God had called him to shepherd, here's what it says, here's why it says it, here's what it teaches us. And with that idea and those thoughts in mind, you stop and you think, man, this man, Brother Ron, and that's, that's how I knew you, Brother Ron. Yeah, I agree with, he never was Dr. Ron, although he did earn it, but he was Brother Ron. Uh, there's many great things that could be said about him. And let me list some good stuff. And, and when I'm using the word good here, I'm not using it like the world uses it. I'm using it like God's word uses it. We could say that <clears throat> he was a good husband, and he was. We could say that uh, he was a good father, and he was. We could say he was a good salesman, and he was. We could say he was a good fisherman, and he was. But if you stop there, you stop too short. Because <clears throat> God called him to preach. And anyone who heard him preach would have to say this. He was a good, faithful preacher of the whole counsel of God. He never read a passage that he was scared of. 
He met some that took some studying, but never met one he was scared of and always wanted to dive into it and see just what does the Lord say here? Why is this here? What does it teach us? And I don't know how much time the Lord has left for me here, but however much time it is, I do know this. I'll forever be grateful to Brother Ron for being the instrument that God used to make God's word come alive for a country boy from Scriven. Thank you. I admired Brother Ron. I was honored to sit under his preaching, under his teaching, under his guidance. And what a wonderful person to call a friend. I can't think of any other. I told him, I was talking to him one time, and I told him about my limits of, of my singing. I like to sing. But I told him, I said, I know my limitations, my ability. I said, but I don't sing to be glorified. I sing to glorify. He says, as long as you do that, you'll be all right. That's all, that's all he had to say about it. So I know he enjoyed this song, and I, I do it. I hope I can do it the best to honor him. <laughs> Locked in prison, I've been found a tight. Troubles and chains trying to stop my fight. Ain't nobody gonna go my bail Oh, devil jailer's right outside my cell I'm not Silas and I'll never be Paul But they found the only way to shake those walls They didn't make a break in that midnight hour They sung the house down with that Holy Ghost power I feel a little song coming on Ain't no bars gonna hold me long Gonna keep on singing till they're gone These old walls are not that strong I feel a little song coming on I feel a little song coming on Ain't no bars gonna hold me long Gonna keep on singing till they're gone These old walls are not that strong I feel a little song coming on Circumstances got you doing time Just hold your peace until 11.59 Just clear your throat so you can do your thing Straight up midnight make them rafters ring Can't be somber, no, don't be soft Go right on and sing the roof right off There's no escape, so the devil says but he's not God in this ain't Alcatraz, no. I feel a little song coming on. Ain't no bars gonna hold me long. Gonna keep on singing till they're gone. These old walls are not that strong. I feel a little song coming on. I feel a little song coming on. Ain't no bars gonna hold me long. Gonna keep on singing till they're gone These old walls are not that strong I feel a little song coming on Gonna knock a little power off these doors Tumble and roll underneath these floors Stay and pray with that jailer too Sing right out of these prison blues Woo! I feel a little song coming on Ain't no bars gonna hold me long Gonna keep on singing till they're gone These old walls are not that strong I feel a little song coming on I feel a little song coming on Ain't no bars gonna hold me long Gonna keep on singing till they're gone These old walls are not that strong I feel a little song coming on 
Gonna keep on singing till they're gone. These old walls are not that strong. I feel a little song coming on. on, on. Now, what is one to do with that song, right? Amen. We might get saved up in this place today. Grant. Nothing's holding us back. Poppy is praising his Savior. He's waiting for glory. We are so thankful to be able to even come together in this place to worship our King and Savior. And one day, we will all be there if we've trusted in Christ. I thank these brothers for sharing and song and reflection and these musicians from Trinity today sharing their heart, their passion, the same passion that Brother Ron had that he shared with so many of us. You should have heard the little sing that the family had earlier today at our little luncheon. Just beautiful. Just a taste. A taste of heaven. A taste of the things to come. The things that give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Worshiping our Savior. For those that have trusted in Christ. And there's going to be time today for me to reflect and to honor Brother Ron. To honor our Savior. That's definitely going to happen. And we're going to dig into the text. We're going to be in 1 Peter. And when you go out of this place today, I want you to remember everything that was said here today. Because we're only proclaiming the truth today. We're only proclaiming the truth. There's nothing that's going to be spoken from this pulpit. And I thank you, Pastor, for allowing us to be here today. An opportunity that's so awkward because here we are to mourn the life of a loved one. But yet we have a celebration in our heart and in our soul. Because we have hope. If we hadn't hope, I don't know what we would do. And we've been there before. We've seen loved ones. We've seen what we consider the lost. And when we say they're lost, it's because they have not come to a saving foundation with their Savior. So as I ponder the fact that my wife gave me three to five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've been to some funerals, right? We've all been there. And this is not going to be a dreaded time. This is going to be a focused time. We just get to turn our hearts toward heaven for a moment. He pressed on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call. Of God in Christ Jesus. You've heard that passage. Philippians 3.14. Remember that. Philippians 4.13. Pressing on toward the goal. That's the goal we celebrate today. The goal that we are all wanting to achieve. Through our worship. Through our song. Through our passion. Through our heart. Through our fishing. The best time that. My father-in-law and I had was when we caught 99 catfish out of that river. Right, Gran? My, my hands were worn out. I had never experienced that before in my life. Here we were cleaning fish at 1030 at night. Finally, we knocked on Gary's door and said, Gary, please take the rest of these fish. These are the memories. But what were we doing? We were in fellowship. We, we were in fellowship with one another. He was training me. He was molding me. He was shaping me. Much like he did with every one of you. In some form or fashion, when he spoke to you, he was mentoring you, was he not? He wanted you to achieve what he had achieved. Somebody asked me earlier today, how did you get where you are today? I'm like, well, Brother Ron kept asking me, what are you going to do next? What are you going to do next? Right? Right? He did, Cynthia. What are you going to do next? So I thank him for that. I thank him for the example he has shared with my children. Inspiring them. 
inspiring his children, inspiring his wife to hold fast and to run ahead, full throttle. Those who knew Ron know the facts could never sum up a a life well lived. Anything you read in the obituary or anything you know, that's just half of the truth. There's much more to the story. For example, his care for the family at Trinity. The church that I seemed like just yesterday, he started pastoring. It's been 25 years. This community, this sacrificial service, spending his formative years there in Scriven, his leadership in the community as an encourager through his radio program and his care for the hurting through hospital visits and home fellowships and caring for the sick when they needed it and speaking on the phone for over an hour just because he can, not giving up an opportunity When that phone rings, he might lead that Indian that's calling you to Christ. You follow me? He's not going to give up that opportunity. He is looking for the opportunity to proclaim the truth. Through his love, through his sacrificial service, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was his passion. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That can be our prayer. That can be our battle cry. That's our ethos. That's the backbone of what we do. Think that through for a minute. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing we can do on our own. We need Christ. We need his strength. We need the, this passion that comes And fulfills our souls. Gives us encouragement. This is where brother Ron found his strength. And the power of the spirit. We can take comfort today. Because we know that brother Ron not only talked and walked with the Lord. But today he is resting. He's resting. We remember the Apostle Paul wrote, to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. Present with the Lord. Today, as we say goodbye to this man of God, please let me share with you why we can take comfort from the words of Jesus in John 14, this powerful gospel. If you're ever sharing the gospel and you're trying to start a youngster or somebody that you're trying to bring to saving faith in Christ Jesus, give them the gospel of John. Have them read it, study it on your own. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. This is Christ speaking, capital M, E, me. This is Christ, Jesus, on this earth, ministering in my Father's house. Are many dwelling places, if it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is the hope we have. And receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And you know, and I have this underlined in my text, the way. The way, the truth, the life. The way. You remember Christ later said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we even know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through, again, capital M E, me. No one comes to the Father, my Father, Christ speaking, except through me. This is the gospel. This is the good news. This is the peace message that Brother Ron shared. Do not let your heart be troubled. Death has a way of doing what to us? Tearing us. Helping us to focus on what's next. Death has a way of troubling us, does it not? It troubles us a little bit. This is the the passion that the Lord gave us. 
these emotions, these tear ducts that he's given us to express our gratitude to him. Just the very nature of death is troubling. We know that. We've all experienced in, in some form or fashion the unknown, the unexpected, the what's next, what do we do now, who's going to do this next, all these questions. But guess what? We have a wise counselor that's going to guide us through that. This is the Holy Spirit, and if you allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate your heart and to fill you, he's going to give you wisdom to make it through these days. This is just a sliver of time, and one day there will be a big reunion in the sky. This is the promise. But Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled or agitated because you believe in God. God brings us comfort today Paul says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Again, I have that underlined in my text. God of all comfort. This is the comfort we find in knowing God. Knowing God. The the initial song was what? It is well with my soul. Knowing God is a great foundation for a sound soul. Brother Ron, Pastor Ron, was in the ministry, right? He was in for soul care. Amen. Just a show of hands. Soul care. Anybody? Anybody out there? Both hands lifted high here. Soul care. Amen? Soul care. Because he just spoke. He he just spoke. Think about Christ on the shore, right? Just spoke to Peter. Just spoke to him. Showed him love and action. This is the God of all comfort, and he will wrap his arms around you if you allow him to do so. What does that mean? That's not metaphoric. Literally, he will wrap his arms around you. This this new concept of a virtual hug, right? This virtual hug, this this comfort, this care that he's going to provide to us, He comforts us in our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. If we were comforting one another, that's what Christ would do. That's what Brother Ron did and does and will continue to do because our memories that we will share are these words of comfort, these these acts of passion, this backbone of ministry, this worshiping his Savior through song and singing. and any, Even when he could not strum the guitar anymore, he did what? He turned it on his side and continued to be and learn. Right, Brother Lynn? Going after it, after the prize, running the race. God is providing for us relief and peace we need. We receive comfort in knowing that Jesus is returning for us. Death is simply a waiting room where we wait for the great reunion. Jesus says that if I go, I will return. We detest saying goodbye because it means the event is over. We say things like, I will see you later, or we will do this again on another day. But we know that is not always certain. But he says, I will return. That's the comfort he gives us. That's the wrapping his arms around us. And Brother Ron would say to you today, you have an appointment. How are you going to prepare? There's going to be an opportunity. There's going to be an appointment. How are you going to prepare There's a sermon that was never preached. He 
he was always preparing. And so on his desk is his outline for the next sermon. And the title of the sermon that was never preached is Do You Really Believe? It's right here. It's not my handwriting. Do you really believe? This was in the shoot. This was in the shoot. Always working ahead. Always planning ahead. Two Bibles in the RV. Six Bibles on the counter. Two Bibles in the shop. One Bible in the car. Seeking the text. Proclaiming the truth. His preservation power. His presentation power. And his performance pleasure. Sounds like a Brother Ron sermon, does it not? That's encouraging, but how appropriate. Because a lot of times these preachers, we're preaching at ourselves. The Lord helps us wrestle with the text. Here, Brother Ron, title of his sermon that he took away with him is, Do You Really Believe? Tell me that was not his prayer. We receive comfort in knowing that we have a destination. And I'm going to conclude today by digging hard into the text. The text that's been on my heart ever since we all knew it was getting close. And in 1 Peter, Peter gives us the gospel presentation. He continues over and over to give us what the gospel message is. In 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 through 9, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again, to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. We greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials. So that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory. And honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ, and though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. That's the text. We could read that over and over and over and over again and dig into it and know that there's nuggets of truth found there to give us comfort to our souls. This is our proclamation. This is the grace. This is our security. It mentions, Peter says, born again, living hope, reserved for you in heaven, a salvation We love him. He loves us. And we believe in him and we have a strength in life through faith. Faith is not an easy task, right? We sharpen one another by encouraging one another. Faith is not an easy task. But Brother Ron helped us achieve that. This is a man. That was his desire. He strengthened our faith. Just like some of the gentlemen that spoke earlier, 
He challenged us. He spent time with us. And he proclaimed the fact that he had a living hope. If there's one thing that we can go out of this place today, knowing is that we can and have a living hope if we have trusted in Christ. What does trust in Christ mean? Trusting in Christ means that you have had a moment in time where the Holy Spirit has penetrated your heart. And you find yourself in Christ. No longer running after your own passions and desires. You find yourself in Christ. And you believe in the resurrection. How appropriate on Easter morning. Only a preacher goes home on Easter morning, by the way. He's not going to let us forget. All the excitement on Easter. Everybody dressed up, looking sharp. New opportunity. Great weather. And now we have this fond memory of the day that the race was over for Brother Ron. And guess what? What kind of music is he strumming now? Getting ready. Full gospel choir, right? I can't even imagine. We only get glimpses of it. And then it says, for Brother Ron, the text reminds us that this hope is reserved for us. This reservation, when we say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. The moment you receive Christ, when you have this soul change, you're in Christ, you have. And I spoke just a few days ago to the family, and I said, you know, I grew up thinking that it was something that I was going to one day attain. Thank the Lord I was taught later on in life that this sanctification path that we are on is a process and not an event. The gospel proclaims that we have eternal life. The moment you receive and trust Christ and you have soul change and you find yourself in Christ, old things have passed away, behold, all things become new, you are now in a living hope. This seat, this opportunity, as Denise shared with me earlier, this appointment, She said, Daddy would always say, how are you going to prepare? How are you going to prepare? He wanted to have this reservation, right? He knew it. He had it. And then it goes on and he concludes in this little section, a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. And that's speaking to us Christians. Us, we as believers can have this same seat reserved for us it's only available to those that receive the same fella peter he was on the shoreline there see a galley and christ looked at him just like he looked at john and explained to him just follow me drop your nets just just follow me so simple but but but, but, but christ what what am i to do with these fish What am I to do with these nets? What am I to do with these boats? What am I supposed to do with all this stuff? Peter, follow me. That's all he's asking today. He's saying, follow me, and I will change your life. I will make you fishers of men. And that's what Brother Ron was. Poppy was a fisher of men. Going after, keeping records of Folks that have trusted in Christ so that could become his prayer. So this gives us hope. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to this great mercy has done what? Has caused us to be born again to a living hope. This is the living hope that Brother Ron proclaimed. 
We're so thankful for today, man. We're so thankful for Jesus. We're so thankful for the hope. So I'd ask at this time, if you would please stand. I'm going to ask Kathy to come to the piano and get ready to conclude our service. But as Brother Ron was preparing for his last sermon, he said, do you really believe? And he was in Jude 24 and 25, and I'm going to use this as our benediction today. Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. And all God's children said, Amen.